I would just get some studying in. Even the first few chapters absolutely changed how I took the reading section. Not drinking caffeine the day of the test. LSAT created a shorter version of the test. I don't, I can't explain. Hello and welcome. My name is Caitlin and this video is going to be all about how I improved my LSAT score. Everything that took place in my LSAT journey, the things that helped me, things I wish that I had done differently, and then also what the entire process taught me about life. I have taken the LSAT so many times. If you are studying for the LSAT right now, I have truly felt your pain. It is not necessary to take the LSAT as many times as I have. I've taken it, let's see. I took it a total of six times and that is totally unnecessary, but I want you to know that I have felt the fear six times. The first time I took the LSAT was in January of 2019. For all intents and purposes, I took it totally cold. The only thing that I had done beforehand was several years prior, I had purchased an online course and I had done a little bit of that, but it had been so long bef between when I did that tiny bit of studying and when I took the test that I don't think it really counted. This was essentially my cold score. And I'm gonna tell you all of my scores. I just said, I'm gonna kick the door down on this test. I think everything that I'm gonna tell you today will apply to you no matter where you're starting. So it's just easier for me to use my actual scores. If you get a lower score than me, you should just assume that you can start there and improve from there. And if you get a higher score than me, then you can just use the same principles to improve on your high score. So I don't think the score actually matters. I think it's the improvement that matters, if that makes sense. So I got a 157 the first time I took it. That is the 66th percentile. And like I said, that was essentially just no studying. That's what I got. That's a fine score. It didn't match my goals at the time. So I knew that I needed to do more studying. I think at that point I took a live course. So the live course that I took was um, from the same company as the online course that I had purchased. So it was kind of a weird thing. When I purchased the online course way back when, like in 20, like 16 or something crazy, maybe even earlier than that, they sent me all of these books. And if you're studying for the LSAT, you've probably seen these, but in case you haven't, these are just volumes of previous LSAT tests. And it's probably the most important tool that you'll need because uh, you'll want to be taking practice tests as much as you can or using or rather I should say you'll want to be using real LSAT questions for your study. So I did the in-person course and that was through a company called ACE Test Prep and they're local to me but I will link their online course below. ACE Test Prep, it, uh, I know a lot of people that it was really helpful for. For me, it did a couple of things. I feel like ACE Test Prep really helped me to understand conditional logic and also um, diagramming games. I feel like those are two really foundational things that ACE Test Prep taught me. And then also I feel like ACE Test Prep helped me with understanding logical reasoning like to a really expert level. So for those two things, I would definitely recommend ACE Test Prep. For really getting my score higher, like a lot higher, um, I don't think that it, it did that for me. I think that it helped me with a lot of foundational things and that's kind of the extent of it. That's also a personality thing. In-person classes are have never been that great for me um, when I'm trying to learn something that I just don't understand. I have always done better learning from a book like reading and trying to teach myself or maybe getting one person to kind of explain something to me. The classroom setting, like I said, it was good for logical reasoning, but I kind of already was pretty good at logical reasoning and then it was good for the conditional logic and for the diagramming of the game so that is pretty foundational but again I think I got that from the online version because I was self-paced at that point and so the in-person class if you know that you're good at in-person classes and that works for you then definitely do an in-person class if you are like me and you've always just uh, learned from books then don't bother. I think it would probably just be a waste of your money or at least not the most efficient use of your money. So I took the LSAT again in October 2019. I only improved my score by two points. Um, I do have to say though, I drank an entire bang energy drink that morning. I don't like, I don't, I can't explain. I do think that impacted my test taking ability. 
159 is the 73rd percentile, so it is a jump, uh, but again, it didn't really meet my goals to be able to go to the school that I wanted to go to. So I took it a month later, and I got a 164, which uh, is in the 87th percentile. 157 to 164, that's pretty much what ACE Test Prep did for me. Thank you, ACE Test Prep. And like I said, I really do think that not drinking caffeine the day of the test really helped me. So I think, and it's funny because I think I was worried about falling asleep because that's happened to me before where I just get so sleepy during tests. Like even in high pressure situations, like I think I just wanted to self-sabotage or something. At this point, I had realized that the in-person class had taken me probably as far as it was going to take me. I moved into studying on my own and I want to show you. I picked up these two books because they were recommended to me. So this is the Blueprint Logic Games book. I did use this but I would not recommend getting this book. The format I'll show you is like they have all these little cute cartoons and things like that. But I really don't like information that is, I guess I can zoom in on this. I don't really like information that's given in like little chunks like that. I don't really like a lot of asides and like their funny little humor it hasn't aged well to be honest. You can't even get this book anymore. I regret the money that I spent on it. If you are interested in Blueprint, I think they exclusively have an online course now. But. I wasn't a huge fan. Other people like it. That's all I can really say. I also at this point bought this book, which was also recommended to me. This is the Manhattan Test Prep um, book on reading comprehension. I absolutely love this book, 100% recommend it. It is, I'll show you the format, it's just very clean and the way that I used this book was I would read it and then highlight important things so that I knew that eventually I would want to go back and do a review but I probably wouldn't have time to read the whole book a second time. And so I would just highlight things and when they had exercises I would genuinely try to do the exercises. I never actually made it through the whole book because the last few chapters just get kind of high level and my study habits, I'll talk about that near the end of the video, but they weren't awesome. I will say though that just even reading like the first two thirds of this book, even the first few chapters absolutely changed how I took the reading section and I improved a lot on it. I can't recommend this book enough. So using those two books, I studied for about a year and I took the test again in October 2020. At this point, LSAT had to introduce a new version of the test called the LSAT Flex. And this was in response to the pandemic. No one could go to the centers and take their tests. So LSAT created a shorter version of the test by chopping out one of the four sections. So traditionally, there is a reading comprehension section, an analytical reasoning section, which is usually known as logic games, and there are two logical reasoning sections. And logical reasoning is by far and away my very best section. I am extremely good at it. Like I can easily get all of them right or maybe only miss one. So I was relying on those two logical reasoning sections to carry my score just a little bit higher. It probably didn't make a huge difference on the flex that they took out one of the sections, but it did make enough of a difference. I believe it did impact my score. If you're not great at logical reasoning, the LSAT Flex is awesome for you because it just, I mean, it just, the test is shorter, which is nice, and you're not doing it an extra section of something that's difficult. So I took the test and I got a 165, which is a good score. Um, it is the 89th percentile, but it was not what I needed at the time. That scholarship that I was going for, <laughs> they, changed the score that you need from a 165 to a 166 so i think i got my score and then found that out or no i found out about the 166 uh requirement a couple of weeks before i found out my lsat flex score so that was a, a bummer time uh but again not the worst thing that could happen to a person I took it a month later, hoping that now that I was adapted to the LSAT Flex, that maybe I would be able to just get that one extra point, and I did not. I got another 165. I moved on with my life. I applied to schools. I got into a school that I was happy with. I 
accepted a half tuition scholarship and honestly was really happy and they told me in april the school sent me an email saying hey if you will take the lsat again and you can get a higher score we can probably give you full tuition that was an offer i couldn't really say no to i still had all my study books i had taken the lsat flex twice at that point i really felt like i could get a higher score the stakes were low because i was already in and i already had a half tuition scholarship extremely blessed score that i needed to be able to get the full tuition scholarship was most likely a 167 based on the information that they were giving me so i thought okay i can study my butt off and i can get uh, these extra two points for full tuition i have nothing to lose let's go for it and honestly this was this is gonna sound kind of silly but this is a really important time in my life. Just to clear up the timeline a little bit, I took the test in November 2020, got a 165, used that to apply, and got admitted in the beginning of 2021, and then in spring of 2021 was when I found out that I had an opportunity to take it again. So I registered for the June 2021 LSAT Flex. I knew that my weakest spot or my weakest section was the logic games. So I purchased this, the Manhattan Test Prep. I liked the reading book so much. I thought I would give their logic games a try. I absolutely loved it. I recommend this book so much. I'll show you the inside. Once again, it's just like really clean. Their explanations just make a lot of sense to me. And I did the same strategy with this. I would read through it, highlight things that were important. I would dog ear um, principles I wanted to go back to or that I thought if I was struggling on a game, I could re reference quickly. And when I got my score back for the June 2021 test, I had actually gotten a 169. That was an awesome score for me. It was the 95th percentile. I was able to get a full tuition scholarship with a stipend for getting that score. And it was also a four point jump. So for me, that was a huge deal after this is a couple years now of studying. And um, apart from my initial jump, I had been just crawling up by one point or no points. Like it's just like I'm trying to explain <laughs> I studied for a year and went up by one point. And so that is just super discouraging. So I really wanna hone in on the things that made a difference in that last round. So one, I think my mindset made a difference. Like I said, the stakes were low. I already had a plan to go to school, like everything was gonna be okay. So it took a lot of the pressure off. But apart from that, I just, had this fire inside me i i just said i'm gonna kick the door down on this test like i am gonna finally master this stupid test and i changed my study habits a lot so i had about three months to study and the basics of what i did during that time were i really honed in i knew that i was good at logical reasoning and i didn't have the time to spend on it anymore so i honed in on the reading comprehension and on the logic games and especially the logic games because I was genuinely so weak at logic games so I tried to maintain my reading comprehension but mostly I would do games so I would read this book like I said I would highlight it and mark passages like dog ear spots where I thought that I might need to go back to when I was practicing games and I would try to do all the exercises that it gave me and then I would use these books and practice lots and lots of games. I would also use YouTube videos from just random people who would explain the game. So if I didn't understand how a game was working, I would go watch the game. I was advised by several different online sources to repeat games. That's supposed to be a really effective method. So I did repeat a lot of games. And I do think that helped me get better at games. And then the other thing that I did was I just, a huge problem that I have is I don't have the attention span um, or the bandwidth after like a full day of working to take a full length practice test. 
What I could do though was set the timer for 35 minutes and take one section. And then I would take a break or do what I needed to do or go to work or whatever and then come home and take another 35 minute section. And then I would add the three sections from the same test together and kind of figure out my score. And that's kind of how I was gauging my progress. So I did take the time many times to take full length practice tests, but I didn't do it every day or maybe as frequently as might be like the right way to do it. I really started to understand during this time that consistency is more important than perfection. And that's actually uh, my version of a quote by Michael Hyatt, who said that consistency is better than perfection. But I like to think of it as that consistency is more important than perfection. Perfection is awesome. Um, when you can get something perfect, like it feels good, or if you can improve something to the point of perfection, that's great. But consistency is more important. So this applies to anything. Like if you are trying to have a relationship with your family member your consistency with them like you could have one really great day with them but what does that really do for you like it's if that's a perfect day yeah that's awesome but if you have a consistently good relationship with them that's going to be way more important than one perfect day the way that this applied to me in studying for the lsat and what truly made a difference is that i i wasn't even timing how long i was studying every day i was just coming home from work every day and knowing that i needed to get some studying in and i would just get some studying in it wasn't perfect it wasn't the most efficient it wasn't this ideal like lsat study schedule that i always thought i should do it was just studying and i just really really tried and um just really, really trying got me a four point increase in a couple of months. If there's anything that you leave this video with, it should be that just try to study every day, try things and don't be overwhelmed and just give up, which I did many times. I know some people are just really good at this, but honestly, at that point in my life, I just hadn't ever really learned how to study and how to be okay with not studying perfectly. My idea of good studying was this perfect schedule that was just not realistic for me. Um, everything worked out for me really well. So grateful. Uh, but I will always wonder like what I could have done had I been applying those principles much earlier on. So just to recap, be willing to take the LSAT more than once. Your first time is probably not going to do it for you. It's totally fine to take it as many times as you feel like you need to take it. Do you need to take it six times? No. But take it as many times as you need to. It's there for you and the money is a pain and it hurts to pay that 200 bucks, but it is a huge investment. The, the return on scholarships is totally worth it or the return on get, going to a school that you want to go to is totally worth it and it does make a difference. I think that I would have gotten into all of the schools I applied to if I had applied with the 169. And with the 165 during that 2020 application cycle, it just wasn't cutting it for some of the schools that I was interested in. And two, buy Manhattan test prep. Like obviously I am not a big YouTuber. These guys are not sponsoring me. I get nothing from this except a good conscience knowing that I passed along the best stuff to you. I majorly regret not getting their books earlier and it's like 40 or 50 dollars that again the money hurts but at the same time that was the best investment I ever made. I wish I had had that logic book excuse me the logic games book way earlier on because they were explaining stuff I finally was getting things about games and I can't say that all the foundational work I had done up to that point wasn't making a difference, but it really started clicking with that Manhattan test prep book. Finally, just remember that consistency is more important than perfection. Wherever your score is at, um, lower than mine, higher than mine, it doesn't matter. You are going to feel so good that you improved it and that you, were, that you took it as far as you could take it um, for your goals and it's, it's just very satisfying to see your hard work pay off. Honestly, when I was studying for that last test, I felt like I was in a Disney movie and every day was just like a montage of me getting better and it, it just really felt good. I'm not proud of the score itself. I'm proud of 
my mindset change and how my hard work actually paid off. Speaking of mindset, if you really struggle with either perfectionism or feeling like you can't do this test, I mean, maybe your first score was like a 133 and you just think you can't go to law school, not true. Highly recommend the book Mindset by Carol S. Dweck. It can really kick you in the butt and help you understand that nothing is impossible. You can totally improve your score. And I guess final thought is that I'm in law school now and I love it. And the LSAT genuinely, surprisingly even, did prepare me for law school. I can feel like the parts of my brain that I had to use studying for the LSAT, I use those parts of my brain in school. And so standardized testing is not everyone's favorite thing, but I am glad that I learned these concepts um, because they're useful to me. I hope this video was helpful to you. I wish you all the best. I hope you have fun during your LSAT study and that as you on your applications, everything goes great for you.